Hi everyone, this is the Math 30-1 Functions Review and this is question number 5. It says when f of x, and then let me give you the function right there, is divided by x minus 5, uh, the remainder is 2. We're going to determine the value of k. Now, I know that there's going to be a whole bunch of you out here that are going to want to jump on and start doing synthetic division with this thing, but th this question is designed to be testing the remainder, the or the, yeah, the remainder theorem. So we know that if you take, uh, if we're dividing by x minus 5, we know that if we then evaluate this at 5, okay, that the result should be the remainder. And in this case, that means the result should be 2. Okay. So now, what we would do is we would plug in 5 uh, into this. So we're going to get 5 cubed minus 7 times 5 squared, okay, plus k times 5 plus 17, and this should equal 2 here. Now, we're just going to piece together uh, the different parts here. Okay, 5 cubed is going to be 125 minus 7 times 5 squared uh, plus 17, whoops, Sorry, I'm doing this in the calculator here, and all of a sudden I'm up in the exponent doing stuff there, so plus 17. So these three terms, this one, this one, and this one, are going to get me negative 33 plus 5 times k is equal to 2. Now, bring the negative 33 over, and we get 5k is equal to 35, so k is equal to 7. Okay. Now, would this work if you did synthetic division and then just left the variable in there? Yeah, but that's not the point of this question. That's not the intention of this question. We want you to know that when you're dividing in a, in a case like this, x minus 5, okay, that uh, you, can, you can just plug in that 5 and the result is the remainder Okay, when you do that division. Now, I'm going to show you another way of doing this on your calculator. Okay, uh, And the reason I'm going to show that to you is because to do this, you still need to know the remainder theorem. Okay, so here we go. Whoops, we'll make sure there's no glare on this. Here, let's do it this way. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my math button here. Okay, and that's going to take me into this menu right here, and I'm going to press my up arrow key and take me to numeric solver. Now, if you've got an older version of this calculator, like the 83 or uh, an earlier 84, uh, you're looking for just um, solver not numeric solver, just solver. So you press enter. I've got two boxes here, okay? Now I'm gonna show you what, what I mean, what we uh, do with those in just a second here. If you've got the older version of the calculator, you don't have this, what you've got is zero equal to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna put the zero in, in equation two here, okay? So, so you've already got that, if you've got the older version here, but I, I have to do it separately. So I'm gonna just enter the equation, x cubed, okay? minus 7x squared uh, plus, and I'm actually going to put in a k, kx, which is nice about this feature here. I can, I can use the variables as I see them, plus 17. Okay, so there's the, the one side of the equation. I know, okay, I know that my remainder should be 2. Now, if you've got the older version of the calculator, what you would have to do is make this minus 2 at the end, because the, the calculator thinks about it in terms of, of setting it equal to zero. So w when I do this here, the calculator is going to bring that two over for me automatically. But if you're using the older version, if you're using solver, you need to do that on your own so that the whole expression is equal to zero. So I, I, you would need to subtract two. Now I, I press OK. Now what, they, what the, this thing does now is it gives you a list of the variables. Okay. Now I know that x is going to be 5 because of the remainder theorem. This is why I don't mind this particular method uh, showing you guys because you still need to know the remainder theorem. But I'm going to let x equal 5 and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to k. I don't know what k is. I'm going to solve for k. Now if you look just above your enter button there's the word solve. Now it's in green. Okay, That's because I have to press alpha and solve. So I make sure that my cursor here is blinking on the k. I press alpha and then I press enter and it determines that k is equal to 7 which is exactly what I found when I did it by hand. It's a neat little tool.